Why is it? Why is it? You know, this is not a concentration camp here. This is a school. This is a school in Orlando. We are currently providing schools that are wooden barracks with air conditioning backpacks and chain link fences. This is a normative school now in the very wealthy state of Florida. How have we reached this situation in which now, in our wealthiest years, we build public buildings that look like this, when in the 30s and 40s and the 1890s and the 1870s and the 1860s and the 1810s, we used to build magnificent public buildings for our kids and for ourselves. What we have done is we have reallotted the budget that we have, the public purse that is spent on infrastructure, away from vertical infrastructure that people can use towards horizontal infrastructure that only cars can use. It's not that we're poorer. It's just that we're building gold-plated highways. Nothing but the best for our cars. Every year, the standards get more generous for the cars. The lanes get wider. The centerline radii get, 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 uh, get more, uh, more generous and so forth. While for the schools, we become progressively accustomed to nothing but the worst for our kids. That, is, that must be affecting society in a serious way. We can't afford daycare centers, but we have, we have budgets of billions for highways. Right now, this country, President Bush has committed us to additional billions for highways. There are states like Florida where the highway department budget approaches or exceeds the education department budget, despite the absolute futility of building highways. Because as I've said earlier, very early on in the talk, it doesn't solve the traffic problem. In fact, let me quote a report from Los Angeles. The Southern California Association of Governments, Los Angeles and its attendant communities completed a computer model of the year 2015 in which they modeled every possible alternative for traffic, including double-decking highways, buying additional right-of-way, mandatory staggering of work hours, uh, subsidizing of public transit. Their conclusion was, nothing that can feasibly be done will have any but a cosmetic effect on the problem except for mixed-use planning. Cosmetic being it, that's only a temporary solution. So all, any and all money spent on building highways, as opposed to roads and streets, which are necessary, but on building highways, is absolutely down uh, the barrel. Now, for many years, we were able to afford that. We were able to afford the illusion that we could do that and also do this, but that's no longer the case. And you should fight this with all the energy that you have, because it's really wasting uh, your, your treasure. One last individual uh, type of person that, that suffers from, uh, this says from, from before dawn to after dark, traffic governs Prince William family. These people, if you read this, actually don't have eight hour work days, they have 11 hour work days. Because of the, when you factor in the commuting, we're right back to the standards before of the Industrial Revolution. See, we think we work eight hours, but we have to commit one hour on either side uh, to something that is actually much more stressful than even the work usually, which is the commute. What the middle class does, and the middle class in suburban sprawl is accustomed, is perfectly accustomed to commuting an hour to work and, 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 and an hour back. What the middle class does by, by spending those extra hours is that their quality of life drops drastically, not their standard of living. The standard of living in terms of square footage and washing machines is perfect, the quality of life is very low because if you commute one hour a day to work and one hour back, you're spending eight weeks in the car. So you can add those eight weeks to your two-week vacation and you can see what that does to your quality of life. It's, it's devastating. You can also calculate the quality of life of your children. If you commute one hour a day over and back, by the time your child is 18, you will have spent three years in the car three years of high quality time with your children, not at night, but good daytime hours that are, cannot be spent with your kids. It's absolutely astonishing. And you can add to that the quality of life of the poor. Do you know that owning a car in the United States costs $5,000 a year? That $5,000 a year can sustain a $50,000 mortgage. There is nothing that you can do in terms of making housing cheaper that can make a bigger dent in affordable housing than permitting a family to own one car less. In other words, to own just one car instead of two or two instead of three, because that's $50,000. And that isn't a theoretical number. It's what the bankers call a back ratio. See, when you apply for a mortgage loan, the front ratio 
is the, the amount you're asking for relative to your income. The back ratio is the amount that you're asking for relative to all your debts. And bankers, in, in, for example, in Florida have told me that they often have to requ require people to sell cars before they qualify for mortgages because they can't. And what people do is, in, in fact, they sell the car, then they go right around and buy it back again after they're qualifying. But the bankers aren't wrong. Those people, in fact, cannot afford the cars. And they're up to here in debt, within a, holding two jobs, husband and wife working, <coughs> weekends being busy. It's, it's the most fantastically low quality of life that you can imagine to be in the lower middle class in the suburb. It is much worse than any Italian with one-third the income might experience. <coughs> We're, I don't think, really, that as a people we deserve this rotten deal that is being presented as, as the American dream. And it is being every, every, all the illusions that the marketing people, that the developers, that television, everything is actually selling this to, to, to the American citizen. And very few people are providing the alternative. But the instant the alternative is provided and understood, they flock to it. In fact, the problem we have with all of our towns, the ones that are being built, is that even the small units become unaffordable because there's such, there's such a, a desirability to live in this kind of community. The experience of, of Florida and the prospect of planning in Florida is really quite depressing. We're beginning now to enter a cycle of planning in which if everything goes very well, an entire generation of planners will have the capability of spending billions of dollars and in the end what we will look back upon in the year 2010 is that the driving time has been restrained to 40 minutes or to 30 minutes. That's all. That is really what's in the books now. That's what concurrency, the only thing that concurrency is worrying about is traffic driving time. That is really unworthy of our capabilities and of our energies and of our political will. What we should be worrying about is the, res the, the restoring of communities like this. Everything that is in this photograph, in this old photograph, the types and quality of buildings, how they're assembled, the street and what it's like, the, the gathering of people of different ages and different incomes, the fantastic, the fantastic feeling of community which is evident here. This is the human habitat. This is what we should in fact be instituting in our codes and be worrying about in our planning. There is a great deal of distraction going on now towards traffic movement and the ecological movement. A lot of energy is being spent in the, in the safeguarding of, wet, of, wet, of wetlands which is a wonderful thing to do and very useful, but the same energy should be applied in the safeguarding of the human habitat. And that's really what I've been talking about today. Now, I have simplified things somewhat. I can speak easily for another hour more talking about the technicalities of traffic and how they go through neighborhoods and so forth, but very few people can stand that much uh, in one, especially after lunch. Because this, in the end, is quite a depressing analysis, isn't it? <laughs> Thank you.